Hey everybody, how's everybody doing? Let me just switch this back to voice. So you can all hear me okay? All right, how's everybody doing? Take a wild guess what guitar was playing that on. And the first guess will win a congratulations from the hack. <laughs> in the meantime, Let's see who we got in the house here. We got, hey, Mitch Heyman is here. Mitch showed up a little early, but thank you for showing up. Uh, Zach Thong is here. Nice to see you. Jay Steen, welcome. Daniel Horsley, how are you? Todd Flowers, hey, man. Charlie S. Cheddar Kung Pao. I keep my stuff right next to my junk, you know, over by my crap. <laughs> yeah, that's that kind of works. Todd Flowers is here. Hey, what's up, Doc? Nice to see you. Janice Lala, how are you? Can't see the guitar. Yeah, that's part of the charm there, Brian. I want you to guess what I was playing. And I was playing this like totally dry, clean, just a hair of dirt. Because when I practice, this is how I practice. No effects, nothing. Then they can really hear how bad you can play. That's part of the, the charm, I guess. Uh, Mark Wade, time has been kind. How are you? Gary Holt, Fly By Night. Yeah, I threw a little bit of that in there. Yeah, that's the other thing. Can you figure out all the songs? I played about five songs or pieces of them. If you can know them all, that'd be incredible. Um, okay, I'm just going down here, and it jumped on me like it usually does. There's Braxel. <laughs> Braxel's still on the sell everything and buy an R9 kick. Uh, Alex Radford, hey, man. Bobby Lopez, nice to see you. Vincent Wiener. Okay, it's not my new R9. <laughs> no. Bobby Lopez, guess the telly. Hey. Right on, man. It was a telecaster. Russ Markhart, nice to see you. Dale Palmer, how are you, man? Hunt 36 solo. Yes, it is a telly. Definitely the telly. Yes, you can tell, eh? See, when you play it all clean with nothing on it, then you can really hear what uh, what you're playing. Telemundo. <laughs> Hey, R2, R3, how are you, man? Uh, hey, Woody, nice to see you. Todd Flowers, Zach Thong. Uh, okay, it jumped on me again. Sorry, folks. This is getting to be a real pain with this uh, jumping uh, chat here. Guitar it. Danny Allen, how are you? Doug J from the UK, how's it going? Okay, Brian Landreth, Chicken Guitars, yes, Angelo J. Ricchetti, how are you, Mitch Heyman, nice to, nice to see you back, buddy, yes, Soda Pop, Telly what, Telly Caster, hey, EVH, yeah, yeah, I saw that, thanks, uh, thanks so much for popping in, Eric, appreciate it, uh, Dale Palmer, okay, I'm at the bottom of the chat, yeah, so, um, so yeah, this is the Telecaster that I was playing. I believe it's a 2013 American Standard. Uh, it was white pick guard. I put a black one on it just because I like it all black. So uh, let me just put that away. But that's what I was playing. So um, got a, a, a lot of stuff that I was going to talk about today. And I'll, I'll get to that stuff in a minute. But... Check, check, check. Can you hear me now? Let me know if you can hear me now, folks. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Let me know if you can hear me now because I'm showing audio on my thing here. Yes, okay, you can hear me now. I'm back. Okay, I don't know what happened there. Anyway, that's weird. Um, Yeah, so 
and I'm probably blaring loud now too, right? Um, okay, cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks for letting me know that. I appreciate that because I'm flying blind here, literally. <laughs> yeah, so I had a lot of stuff to talk about, but um, this showed up today. So I'm going to do a, uh, an unboxing here. You can probably tell by the shape what it might be. It's something that I ordered a long time ago. Okay. Here's the box. I don't know if you can see that. It's a Caline um, Caline effect pedal. So a while back, I was talking about um, looking for uh, a Timmy pedal. And um, Timmy pedals cost a lot of money. They give you a little uh, plug-in cord if you want to hook up your battery external, which makes me think maybe you can't put batteries in this. I don't know. But, yeah, I was going to get a, um, a Timmy, but they're really expensive here, so I didn't get one. And then I put it out there. What's a, a good um, substitute for a Timmy pedal that's che cheap? And this one was mentioned to me. So this, folks, this is a Pure Sky Overdrive pedal. So this is a Timmy clone. Uh, obviously, I just took it out of the box. I haven't tried it. The push button feels solid on it. Um, this was, of course, made in China, and it cost appropriately very little. Um, whether or not it's any good, I don't know. The knobs feel decent. The push button feels decent. So I don't know if I'm going to risk putting this on my board. I do have a couple of shows this weekend, which I'll talk about later on as well. But um, yeah, when I get some time with this, I'll do uh, I'll do a full review and I'll let you know. There are some reviews of this pedal already online. I believe Shane did one a long time ago. Um, but I'll do my own little review. So if anyone is interested in a Timmy-like pedal and you want to substitute um oh there's uh todd flowers is saying he has great luck with the cow line pedals and they're oh there is no internal battery ah that would explain that thanks todd there you go it's why you guys are awesome you're always teaching me stuff this is awesome so um which is fine with me because i i've got a uh a one spot on my uh, pedal board so i hook up everything that way so Okay, so I'll do a review of this, and uh, I'm, I don't know if I'll get a chance to try it out before the gigs or not, but I'll be putting up a review of this, so if anyone's interested in a Timmy substitute, I will let you know what I think of it anyway um, when I got time, and I'll put it on the board, mix it up with everything else. Basically, what this is going to replace is maybe a Tube Screamer. Um, I want to... Um, I want to use uh, maybe this in place of that because I want a little more variation on the tone. And um, this has got a bass and a treble on it. And what else is on there? Got gain, of course, and a volume. So I'll see how if it plays well with others and and uh, and let you know all about this pedal. So finally, right, this, uh, according to Amazon, this was supposed to show up <laughs> like between July the 9th and July, the, I don't know, the 30th or some crazy window like that because it's coming from China. I had no updates, nothing since I ordered it. So I'm like, when the hell is this thing ever going to get here? But I couldn't believe it. I actually showed up today. So it's very cool. Very cool. Yeah, so that happened. Um, okay, we got some more people that popped in. Let me just go back quickly and say hello to anyone that I may have missed earlier. Uh, okay. Uh, so yeah. Okay. I'll, okay. Oh, there's Nocturnal. Nice to see you. How are you? Just going down here real quick. Soda Pop is here. Hey, buddy. Nice to see you. Denny Allen, Vincent Weiner. If I haven't said hello, hello. Han huh? Thirty Six Solo. I'm probably repeating a few names, but that's okay. I'd rather repeat names than miss names. Okay. Blasty is here. It's a chimmy. <laughs> yeah, it's a chimmy pedal. That's a good name for it, man. 
what is a Timmy? Bobby Lopez asks, what is a Timmy? A Timmy is an overdrive pedal. Um, it is, uh, you can use it on its own, but a lot of times and a lot of people use it for a lead boost. And uh, it's just a really nice pedal. I had one. Uh, wasn't mine, but I borrowed one for about a week and holy shit, man, that was a great pedal. And I had to give it back. It was just loaning me to try out. And, uh, yeah, cause they're Bobby, they're, they're, they're pricey here, man, to get, I know you're local. They're hard to get here and they cost a lot of money. So that's why I looked for, uh, something I could substitute it with. So, okay. I'm just going down the chat. Jason Wade is in the house, people. If I haven't said hello to Jason, how are you? Okay, Braxo, listen, man, why don't you just send me the R9 and we're good? <laughs> I'm talking about saving money on a Timmy and you're throwing an R9 at me. I mean, let's do the math, shall we? <laughs> hey, Layla's Guitar Channel, how are you? Okay, okay. Wizard Wand Music? Uh, Charlie S. Hack, I just picked up a Love Pedal Tube. Screamer, I think not bad. 55 bucks reverb. They're like a TS, but they're more. Yeah, I heard a lot about those love pedals. I've never tried one, but I've heard a lot of good. Who is it the Anderton guys that go on about those? I think it might be the Anderton guys. I don't know. I don't know. Gussie Walls is here. Hey, man. Okay, I think I caught every. Oh, there's Brian Stewart. There's Brian Stewart. Awesome. Awesome. Great to have you all here. Let's see. Uh, See how many folks we got in the house right now. We got 40 people in here. You guys rock, man. You guys absolutely rock. Thank you so much. Okay, cool. So I want to tube else called a tube reamer. That's what they actually call the pedal, Charlie. Yes. Wow. There's Thomas Santiago. Hey, man. So question I had was where do you put your stuff? Now, if you're like me and 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 most of you are you've got you know gear and gear and more gear and some of you buy your gear and sell your gear and some of you buy your gear and keep your gear and if you know my situation i'm a gigging guy um you know i play all the time and i like to have different guitars to take out and so on and so forth and uh all my stuff has to stay within this space now this space uh may look big to you but it, it on camera but it's actually pretty small just so you know, that door directly behind me, that's a laundry room behind there. So I'm literally in my basement, right? Um, hey, oh, there's a new name. Doug J, welcome. Has had one for a year and so do I. Great pedal. There you go. Love pedals. Yeah, I've heard good things about those. Um, so I got to keep everything in this space, right? So, you know, I've got now, actually, I don't have everything in the room at the moment because I still, I drive around with, cabs in my car like i've got my cab and my pedals and all this shit in the car right now right if i brought it all in here then this room would would get i don't know even more crowded than what it is but what i did to kind of open up the room and and you saw this probably already if you were watching on the tuesday shows i had a couch behind me right here i actually gave that couch to my neighbor uh just so that i can do the rack thing here so that kind of opened up the room a little bit right but you know the problem is and well it's not a problem it's a good good thing is i've got cases for every single guitar so it's nice to have the guitars out but then where do you put all those freaking cases so uh you can't see it but around the corner here i've got um i got a closet that's literally stacked like cases on top of cases right but everything again, has to stay within this room, right? And I've got a small house, so like I can't go outside of this room with stuff, right? So that's what, that's why I'm putting it out there. Like, I know there's a lot of you out there that have got like way more gear than I've got. And where do you folks all keep all your stuff? Or, you know, do you, I know some of you hang stuff on walls. Some of you use racks like this. Like, let me know what you guys do for storing all your stuff. Okay, I'm going back up to see if I've missed anyone here. Um, Ivan Carter, if I haven't said hello, hello. Uh,
Okay, Braxel. Yeah, it is my passion. Yeah, I agree, but it's just not in the cards. I'm not saying it's not going to happen, Braxel. I'm just saying not in the foreseeable future. Uh, Mitch Heyman, you know, if you get a line six helix floor, it won't use as much space as your pedals. Well, my pedals actually don't, they're probably about as big as your line, your helix board. It's funny because I was rehearsing last night and, uh, the guys that were coming out of the room that we were going to go into, one guy's carrying this thing like this. And guess what it was? The guy was using a Helix. And I go, oh, look, a Helix. <laughs> the guy was carrying the thing out. Like, he was carrying it like it was some, I don't know, some prize, like a like a prize possession. It was kind of like, you know, hey, <laughs> it's kind of funny. So anyway, but yeah, so I saw a kid using one lot. I call him a kid because he was a hell of a lot younger than me. But yeah. So they're they're definitely getting out there. Um, okay, I'm just going down in the chat. So yeah, so so yeah, so folks, so where where do you store all your stuff, and how much room have you got for for your gear and things? Have you got lots of space? Do you got to keep it all tight to one little room? Are you guys in my situation? Hey, there's Phil Mosley music. And Janice is saying that Helix is not for, for Janice. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think, I think if I was, um, I have a section of my basement also hacked and I have wall cabinet for all my pedals, guitar tools and cables, etc. Also use a rack for guitar, but I keep all my guitars in case. Okay. That's, you sound pretty organized there, Charlie. Yes. That's awesome, man. But Shaman, I'm just joking, but the Helix is supposed to mimic it. Oh, no, I know it does. I know it does, Mitch. You know, the thing with the Helix for me at, at this stage of the game um, is, you know, I'm because I, you know, like I play in all these different size stages and big and small and this and that. And some moron decides to fall on my stuff or spill a beer on my Helix. I'm kind of screwed. So that's kind of why I'm staying away from it at, for now. If I was like going to be at home playing and, and, you know, doing the home recording thing, then I think it would be a, it would definitely be a no brainer if that were the case, but that's not the case at the moment. All the guitars hang on the wall. Yeah. You got a nice little setup there, Brian Stewart. Yeah. Your stuff looks good. Braxel's got two rooms for gear. That's awesome. That's cool. My cases are in the living room. But scattered around the house, yeah, I don't have, I can't scatter things. I get in shit when I do that. Can you play chords on a Helix? Yeah, you can play anything you want on a Helix, Janice. A Helix is just uh, programmable effects that, uh, that you can use in place of using effects pedals. And you can set up all kinds of programs and different, like every every button can be like a whole gamut of different sounds that you've put together so i'm not an expert by any means but i've used multi-effects before and that's just a uh, basically a multi-effects unit but a very very good one uh you need a room as big as music is wins new studio oh okay well sure yeah but he's he's a he's a real deal and i'm just a hack so uh you know no nocturnal when they pour stuff on my pedals that's the one good thing is i can just take the bad pedal out and i can i can keep going so uh okay so bobby lopez tried the helix was not happy exchange it for a head rush gig board now he's happy cool cool so you tried a helix that's awesome uh okay vincent wiener wrapped that helix saran wrap <laughs> That's actually not a bad idea, man. Yeah, keep it fresh. Keep it fresh. Um, I got my music room. It's crowded. Yeah, that's the whole thing, right? The wife is the boss. Yeah. Guitar hack. I'm single, so I use my walk-in closet to keep all my guitar boxes. And the three cases I have lean against the wall. There's Jason Wade. Yeah. Just ran out of wall space to hang guitars today and play Amp Tetris whenever I can in my bedroom. <laughs> That's Brian Landreth. <laughs> Amp Tetris. That's what I do when I'm putting the stuff in the car. It's like, okay, I got a little gap there. I can squeeze something in that space. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Oh, that's funny. Um, 
Uh, but shame on the Helix is a bit of a learning curve, but it's not as bad as I thought it was thanks to EVH, Eric, and Dave are. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure it's, when again, when you've got some fantastic people that can help you out, sure. Sure, it's, it's you know, you, you can learn your way around that pretty quick and so on. Yes. So a um, couple other things I, I wanted to, to talk about today. Well, let me let me tell you, tell you what's going on first. So I've got a couple of gigs coming up. Um, I, I don't know, most of you folks are from the U.S., but I don't know if you're aware, but uh, uh, Canada Day, our national holiday, the birthday of the country, is July the 1st. Uh, which falls on Monday or Monday's the holiday. I don't know if that's the actual day or if that's the holiday. I'm not even sure. But so we got a holiday on Monday and um, I've got, um, I got a gig on that day. So I'm playing tomorrow. No, today's Thursday. So I'm playing on Saturday in, uh, in a smaller place up in, uh, in Markham, which is like about an hour from me. Um, and it's a small place. It's like one floor and, we're not going to be very loud for that. I'm going to take my Marshall DSL 40, just a small combo. That's what I was playing at the top of the show is the Marshall. Um, and then uh, for the other place, I might just use the Marshall as well. It's sort of a military Legion type place that we're playing on the Monday and they're doing a, a celebration for, you know, uh, the country's holiday Canada day. So I got two gigs coming up and, uh, Still debating which guitar I'm going to take. I think I know which one I'm taking Saturday. I might take the Firebird for the Monday gig because there's really no stage, so we got all this floor space. So I might take the Firebird for that show, but we'll see how that goes. Okay, we got a few more people that popped in. I just want to say hello. There's BB Made. How you doing? Black Country Blues. My 50-plus guitars are all over the fucking place. Somebody help me. 50, holy shit. Man, do you play them all black country or what? Uh, just go plumbing. How are you, man? Nice to see you. Yeah, chicken guitars will take some uh, some of those guitars off you black country if you you know you need need storage. <laughs> uh, Braxel, you should get a universal audio box or the new Waza tube expander. I use the aux and can fire up my 1972 Marshall 50 watt and Meza Boogie Mark three and enjoy at room levels. Wow. You got some good gear there, Braxel. That's awesome, man. That is awesome, buddy. Yeah. Everybody's offering to take care of those 50 guitars. Yeah, yeah, Zach Thong. Yeah, eventually. Uh... All right, later, Black Country Blues. And there's Thrash. Hey, Thrash. Yeah, um, I'm. I, at some point, I'll probably change things up. It's just like right now, sort of when you're in the in the midst of the, um, you know, in the midst of battle, so to speak. You know, you don't want to start changing stuff, and now's not the time. That would be like. When the when the gigging season is over, maybe you know, in the winter time, I don't want to think about winter. We just got out of it, but around that time, maybe then I'd I'd look at you know, uh, trying to re rethink, retool that sort of thing. There's my client. Your stuff is scattered. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I, you know to prevent that. That's why I keep everything in in one room here. Keep it kind of small, right? Yeah. Um. So here's another thing I, I wanted to mention. So I was mentioning it at the top of the show. So speaking of Helix and all that, like um, when you like, I've been practicing a lot this week and part of the, you know, part of the reason is I got a couple of shows and we did rehearsal last night and there was a couple of songs that were like, eh, <laughs> I don't quite know how to play these ones out well. So, um, but when I'm, practicing like let me know what, what you folks do i generally practice with minimal to no effects and just going like straight into the amp you know and that way i can hear sort of you know all the all the mistakes all the notes all the flutters this and that whatever um 
because I find that, you know, so that when I get to the gig and I got the whole enchilada going and I got the effects and everything else, then you start layering all that icing on it. And then, you know, it's like everything just sounds that much better. And then you get more into it and this and that, whatever. So, um, so let me know, like when you're trying to learn, uh, not necessarily for a gig, but if maybe if you're going to record something at home or you're just practicing at home, do you play with all your your effects or do you do you kind of just keep it simple and clean or maybe even not even plug into an app? Uh, Brian Stewart says you're in a comfort zone now with your gear. Why would you change? Keep it simple. Stanley. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Like I'm in midstream here. I'm like you know, always, uh, you know, week in, week out. Like I've got shows right up until NAM, and as soon as we get back, they start up again. So I, everything is kind of working right now. So I don't want to like, you know, you, that's why I say like, I mean, I just got this pedal. I'm not just going to throw this pedal on the board and use it this weekend. Like I want to spend some quality time with this first before any of that happens, right? Um. Okay, I'm just reading here. Uh, what's up, Doc? Hey, what's up? I just moved in a smaller space. The one I play most is out on a stand, and the rest I've tucked in cases in the back room and under a bed, amp in the living room, thinking of just hanging them. Yeah, hanging them is cool. You know, I, I like the idea of this or hanging them because they're, like, right there. So you're going to get more rotation of your guitars, right? You know what I mean? Like... Because if they were in cases, you're thinking, well, you know, right away, oh, well, I got to find it, I got to dig it out of the, the closet or whatever, take it out of the case. It might stop you from playing certain guitars. But if you have everything out like this, you're generally going to grab them right away. So that's, yeah, I think hanging them up is cool. Sean Zimmerman is here. Welcome. And James Sever, nice to see you. Thanks for coming along, folks. I uh, just ordered a Friedman Runt 20. I'm sticking with tube amps. Not going to make the switch. Man. That Friedman, that, that's a great amp, buddy. That's right down my alley, man. Yeah, I would I would love to, to have a small Friedman. Not the bigger, like 20 watts for what I do, 20 watts is plenty loud. Plenty loud. Uh, Thrash says, I got seven guitars, two ukes on the walls for now, but maybe moving, so we'll see acoustic. In the family room helps to grab try riffs. Yeah, it's nice to have something close by for sure. Thrash. Uh, I like to play with uh, just before breakup type tone. Unless I'm feeling rowdy, then I play with a beefy chugga chugga, kick you in the face metal zone, metal tone. I should say. That's cool, Janice. My chorus and delay, my micro cube with JC clean always. Yeah, then you can hear everything, right? You can hear your flubs. You know, you want to be able to hear the flubs because that's what you work on, right? You work on what you can't do, not what you can do. And, and it's it's a hard thing to do, but it's something that, you know, you should always strive to do. Scotty G, hey, man, how are you? I have a big home, have big home board and a smaller gig board. At home, I experiment with different pedals and put whatever I need for a gig. That's a good idea, Brian. Yeah, I know a lot of people will have that. They'll have like multiple pedal boards, you know, like a smaller one and a bigger one, like a main one and a mini one or a backup one or all that. I don't I don't have that. I've just got the one board and I just try to make room for everything I need. And I, I try to, I don't have the board in with me. It's in the car, but I probably have a, oh man, maybe a dozen pedals on that sideways, upside down, like whatever I need to do. To make them all fit on that board. Ben Burnett, how are you? I play with uh, isolated guitar track and headphones, then play through a tone that closely matches what I'm trying to learn. I play through Helix into Crown Power Amp and two 212 cabinets at stage volume. Wow, that's a nice setup too, Ben. That's awesome. And welcome, Ben. I don't think I've seen your name in the chats before. Welcome to the channel, buddy. Um... Okay, and it just jumped on me again. Folks, I apologize. The dog paw. Hey, how are you? My custom Max Baronet sat in storage in a dry area. Now the fingerboard has shrunk. Fret creep. Also hanging a guitar by the weakest point is just dumb in my opinion. Well, hanging it off. Well, I don't think a guitar is going to snap from the neck. 
I mean, I don't know. Um, yeah, the fret sprout thing, I've got a little bit of fret sprout happening. And actually, I noticed today uh, one of my, uh, the high E string frets out when I do a crazy overbend on my telly today. But I think I can fix that. I'm just going to get the tool and just raise that one saddle just slightly. So, yeah, that's and that's another thing, too. I always play my guitars before I gig with them the week of. So if anything is going to, you know, um, any flaw that's going to come out, I'll, I'll pick it up right then and there. So I'm not that I'm going to gig with this tally, but I'm just saying, like, you know what I mean? It's always a good idea to do that. A dry run, so to speak. Uh, it jumped on me again. Yeah, man, Friedman and Gibson were cut from the same cloth. Yeah. Jasko, man, pull some videos when you get that Friedman. I'd love to hear you playing your Gibson through the Friedman. Man. That, that, that's like right where I live, literally, man. Uh, Gussie Wells, uh, you would like pink taco, dirty Shirley run free. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of 20 waters. Yeah. And then there's that new one, right? There's the JJ, the JJ amp that they just came out with. Yeah. Friedman was at Cosmo Fest, the thing I was at a few weeks ago, but I didn't check any of them out. I wouldn't have been able to hear myself anyway. It was too many people playing at that place. Uh, Todd Flowers, I do one big board one bigger board <laughs> oh that's cool oh well welcome ben burnett again thanks uh thanks for tuning in and if you're not sub to the channel please sub to the channel and uh, welcome to the channel uh zach thong i'm looking at the boss ds 1x distortion and the boss uh overdrive uh i've had I had something called a turbo overdrive from Boss once upon a time. But you can't go wrong with Boss pedals, man. Uh, you know, they're they're bulletproof. Okay, Ivan, thank you for coming. And you have a great week and a great weekend, actually, Ivan. Thank you so much. Uh, hey, Ben is here. Welcome, Ben. Robert Baker is here. Hey, Robert, how are you? It's the first time I've, you've come to visit me in the chat. Welcome, my friend. Hopefully, I'll, uh, we'll run into each other right now. Uh, what else we got? Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, so so a lot of you like to, like to mix it up. A lot of you like to throw on the effects while you're playing, trying to get the tone for the song. That also I find helpful, too, especially like, if it's a really uh, specific tone you're going for, like if you're doing like a U2 sound or whatever, you might want to make sure you dial in those delays and everything really cool and get that, you know, close to, to what, to, uh, you know, the sound you want to represent. But, you know, I find though when you're just, just practicing and just learning the parts, you're probably better off, uh, you know, uh, really slimming it down and, and not having all the bells and whistles going. Yeah, looking forward to them as well, Robert. Yeah, it should be should be fun, man. Should be a good time. There's Aaron Songs. How are you? The guitar pit is here, keeping it authentic. Yeah, folks, the guitar pit was on Tuesday show. That was an absolute blast. Um, if you haven't checked out the Tuesday show, uh, have a look at that. Uh, always have a good time when uh, when Chris is on the show, man. You got fifty six people in here. You guys rock, man. Thank you so much for. Uh, we're popping in. So um, I got a, a video coming out in a couple of days. I went to the um, the flagship store in our area for our version of Guitar Center, which is uh, Long McQuaid. Long McQuaid is the biggest retailer in Canada. They've got, I mean, where I live, uh, I got four of them within maybe 40 minutes of where I live. Um, so, but they're, they're a great retailer. And when you walk into that store, you can see like, I mean, I saw a rev head at that store and I, I've never seen a rev head at any other store. So they had rev, they had mezzes, they had marshals and all kinds of stuff. And, um, and I, I just, I went there and I just, you know, it's, it's the coolest thing. And I mentioned this in the video, um, you know, for those of you that are making content and you want to, you know, you want to play a bunch of guitars and that, um, the experience that I'm having now, and this has already happened a few times where 
Like I'll walk into a store and I'll say, Hey, I'm a YouTuber and I'd like to try some guitars and shoot, shoot your store. And surprisingly they're like, yeah, go ahead. You know, um, this particular store. And again, this is the flagship store. This is like right downtown, you know, they set me up, they have a room there. Like basically the room was, you know, I was in there by myself for the most part. They were handing me any guitar I wanted to play. I didn't play that many guitars. I think I played four of them. Um, I was trying, you know, the newer ones that were coming out. Uh, if you if you know me, you know which ones they were. You could probably predict <laughs> which ones I was playing. But I was playing them, and uh, you know, and it, it was it was great. I I was all the time I wanted to take. You know, I mean, I just recorded it on my phone. I didn't bring anything elaborate, but uh, you know, if if you do that though. You know, walk in and just say, "Hey, you know, I want to record some in your store." And then I, and then when I was done, I was, you know, looking at some of the guitars they had. And again, they had some crazy guitars. I actually saw a BC Rich Mockingbird in that store. I swear to God, I haven't seen a BC Rich in I don't know how long, but they had one in the store along with Jacksons and PRSs and. Gretches and, and all kinds of stuff, right? But you know, so they had some really, really cool stuff in that store. And by the way, uh some of the guitars I played, like one of them in particular, and one that I would never expect uh to like was probably the one I liked playing the best that day. So I'll let you watch the video. It's coming out in a couple of days and, and check that out. But the guitar that surprised me the most was the was probably the one that I would least expect to, to like playing, you know? Um, but anyway, it was, it was great. Uh, Brian Landreth guitar hack. I've gotten some great deals on love pedals. When he has a Friday flash sale, a lot of them go for 50 bucks. I'll post a link in Facebook the next time he has a sale. Yeah, that'd be cool, Brian. Um, yeah, if, if you can, um, I've got a guitar hack group. Uh, that's part of my, uh, my, uh, Facebook page and my link by the way folks i've got a facebook and instagram page the links are below yeah if you wouldn't mind sharing that that'd be great uh okay jason wade everyone it's that time okay it's the uh nine inning stretch or whatever you call it so it's the uh 40 minute in stretch everybody ymca let's do the stretch thanks jason for keeping us all uh limber for the show new rock Guitar Center has told me no every time I ask to record. Robert Baker? <laughs> Holy shit. Really? Man. That's crazy. Shit, the, the other store I went to, like that was a, you know, that store that I, I was just talking about, I only go there once a year. And, uh, you know, because it's downtown and I hate, I talk about that in the video. But anyway, but the other store that I go to that's a lot closer, like, the guy, there's a guy that works there that, you know, I've been there enough times. He knows me and he literally says, Hey, hack, what do you want to try today? <laughs> it's like, you know, so I can't believe that. I mean, and it makes sense for them to let you play their stuff. I mean, come on, like you're showing their, their, their store. I always mention the store, the location. And if I play a guitar, that's, that's, I find really, really good. I will tell within the video, I'll say, if you're looking for this guitar and you live in this area, buy it from this location because this is a really good one. So I'm promoting the store and I'm, you know, I mean, it's all unofficial. Nothing's written or anything, but I, they let me do it. I, I have not not been uh, told no yet. So I guess I've been lucky. Uh, Janice has two music stores on her videos. That's cool. Did I cover Alex Latotsky? Welcome. There's a new name. Did I cover the logo, the logo of the store, or the logos of the guitars I was trying? In either case, no, I did not <laughs> cover any logos. Uh, dog put test, lay a Les Paul on its back and tune it up, play a note. Now turn it over, string it, and watch the tuning. Oh, so the weight you're talking about the tension on the neck is going to change that much. I've never tried that, but I will. That's uh that sounds like a cool experiment. Just be real careful when you're laying it on its back. 
uh bb may that's a smart attitude for a store to have i'm guessing that's becoming a regular thing for stores yeah i would think so you know i would think so i mean you know and, and why why would you say no you should have tried the r9 uh while you were there just for shits and you know what bobby i wish i had thought of that but honestly buddy i didn't even think about the r9 when i was in that store i didn't even think about it i was looking at like the new release stuff right Hey, there's Ladybug. Hey, welcome, Ladybug. Great show you uh, with you and uh, Nocturnal this morning. That was really good. Uh, okay, I'm just going down the chat. Belongs in a museum. <laughs> okay. Hey, Ron Gillespie. Detroit is in the house. And the chat jumped on me again. There's Jamal. Hey, Jamal, how are you? Joe Hervey, 84. Nice to see you. Hugh Caldwell, welcome. An R8 changes a little. Frampton Relic goes for about three cents. The joy of the thin mahogany neck. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess it would all matter really how thick the neck is. Uh, the dock, but yeah, for sure. Well, I like the '60s neck, so those are kind of thinner. So, I'd be interested to see how that pans out. Uh, Brian Stewart tried an R8, an R9, and an RO at GearFest All Killer. You were okay with all those neck profiles, Brian? Because I, I would probably bounce around an R9 and an RO. Those would be the two. Hey, there's Rob212. Welcome. There's Paul Guitar Music 2. Mitch Heyman says, I got 62 watching. That is absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much, folks. You guys rock. There's McReekin. I haven't seen McReekin in a while. How are you, man? Your new guitar rack looks great. I've wanted one for a while, and I think I'd play more if you had one. Um, I have to thank uh, the supporters of the channel, and you know who you are, for helping me with this. You know what? This is the most inexpensive rack I could find. Uh, in Canadian money, I think this was about $60. So for 60 bucks, and I know a lot of you have warned me about the uh, the rubber and it damaging any nitro. I don't have any nitro finished guitars, by the way. These are all poly. But but I'm when I get a chance, I'll throw something on on the, so that the rubber doesn't make contact with the. It's not even rubber. It's like a styrofoam. It's like pl um, pipe insulation material. So we used to insulate copper pipes, but but uh, I'll um, I'll do that when I get a chance. Oh, you're working, Jamal. Uh, sorry to hear that, buddy. Hey, man, have a good day, and hopefully uh, have a great weekend uh, and a great rest of your week, buddy. Bobby Clipper, hey, man, nice to see you. So, folks, if you've got any questions, please tag me. It'll make it a lot easier for me uh to catch it brian stewart says yeah i like the 60s neck best but the r9 wasn't bad and they had one with an awesome top r8 was a little boring yeah because the r8 okay correct me if i'm wrong but i believe the r8 are the plain tops and the r9 are the flame it might be the other way around i'm not sure i can't remember hey queen b is here todd queen b is my wife is Pete Hickson here? Hey, Pete Hickson. No worries, buddy. You didn't get the notification? Yeah, make sure you turn your bell on, folks, so you know uh, you know when, uh, when I'm coming on. You have my coffee? Queen Bee, if you have my coffee, can you have Miranda bring it down? Fun fact, when Ace left the band in 1982, Eddie, by then a superstar in his own right, announced to Gene that he was sick of Van Halen's new direction and David Lee Roth's ego. He wanted to join KISS. Yeah, I've heard that story, Jason Wade. Uh, I heard it a lot, and Eddie won't say that happened. Gene, will, Gene says it, but Eddie doesn't back him up. So I, I don't know who to believe there. I probably believe Eddie, though, <laughs> because, uh, you know, Gene likes to be Gene. But yeah, I've heard that story before. Um, the, all the all those Gibsons are nitro. I thought they were all poly. 
Gene talked him out of it, insisting Eddie cast too much of a shadow to be the guitar player in Kiss. Okay. Ben Burnett, now here, just saw the Gibsons. Wonder what your thoughts on the play Authentic. Okay, Ben Burnett. Uh, yes, the 58 is plain. All Gibsons are nitro. So use, okay, all right. Okay, so I got it reversed. These are the, it's the, okay, thanks, guys. I, you know, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. Okay. So I will do that. Thanks, guys. Um, okay, so Ben, that topic has been absolutely beat to death. Um, I talked about it real briefly a week ago when it, when it first came out. So I'm just going to say this. Um, I mean, was it a misstep PR-wise? Yeah, it was. It got a lot of, obviously, negative reactions. Um, they pulled the video, which means they are aware that it was a negative reaction. Um, they're suing Dean, uh, which is fine, but don't announce it. And uh, they think that's the, the problem is they announced it, that they're suing Dean. However, that came out. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes between companies that, you know, of brands that we, we all like and love that we are not aware of. Um, there's a lot of stuff that goes on. Um, I've been, I've been talking to a few other people that are in the industry that are a hell of a lot more knowledgeable than I am. And they're telling me stuff that goes on between companies. And I'll just say that them suing Dean, I mean, other than the other well-publicized PRS, uh, lawsuit, um, let's say they sue a lot of people or they try to. And, um, so Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, is that going to make me not want to play a Gibson guitar? No, right? You know, I like the product. You know, I'm not a fanboy, and I'll tell you why because I've played them, and I'll when they're crappy, I'll tell you. If you've seen any of my videos, I or on on my Facebook, I've seen bad ones. I take photos of them. I show the flaws and all that. And I, you know, first to admit, I play them. Some are good. Some are great. And I think with any guitar brand, you just got to find the right one. So was it a mistake? Yes, it was a mistake in that it was publicized. But there's a lot more of that sort of thing that goes on behind the scenes. Their mistake was they let it be known. So, And do not hate Mark Ignazi. It is not his fault. He did not. He is basically a, a pawn. You know, he got the job. They made him read the script. You know, uh, he's taken the brunt of it. But it's not his decision to which, you know, what the comp, who the company sues it, it's above his head. So unfortunately he's getting thrown under the bus and he doesn't deserve it. So, so that's, I, and I don't want to get into, but I know stuff behind the scenes and yeah. So don't, don't beat up on Mark. So, uh, Scott Connor is here. Welcome. Mark Dillon Gibson's are nitro finish. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I was, I was mistaken. Won't be the first and it won't be the last. All right, Joe Hervey. Yeah, man. You know, whatever. Take whichever opinion you want. It's an open forum. No, they are nitro lacquer. Okay, thanks. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, Aaron Songs, am I satisfied with the stand? Well, I'll tell you, it's a cheap stand right? Cheap stands were not made to be moved. So like you would never be able to take that, you know, and gig with it or move it from location to location because it's flimsy, right? But as long as you leave it in one spot, it's fine. You know, there are, if you want like the really good sturdy stands that you can move around is I think the company is Hercules. Uh, they make some pretty sturdy stands. Those you'd be able to move around this thing. No, this is just going to sit in one spot. It's not going anywhere. Sean Zimmerman needs one of those stands. Yeah, they're cheap, man. Okay, just going down here, folks. So, yeah, if you've got things you want to mention, please tag me. Gibson suing is nothing. Remember the Ibanez thing. Yeah, like, yeah. It, the thing is that they they publicize. And, and the other part of it is the timing of it, right? Because, you know, they were trying to you know, change their profile a little bit and do things more on the positive note. And then this came out. So this kind of, you know, they stepped out of the shit and this literally put them back in the shit. So, but what are you going to do? What are you going to do? 
Uh, ben Burnett, first time here, so I didn't know. Just saw the Gibsons and wondered. No, no worries, Ben. No, no I'm not. I'm not upset by it. It's just it's. You know, if you're on YouTube, man, everybody and their nephew has done a video on that topic. So, and really, who am I to, to you know, who am I to, 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 to have an opinion? I'm just a guitar hack, right? But, but yes, and, and, and there it is. Uh, plus, we can put our energy to better use, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. More playing, less gear. More playing, less gear. Um, Yeah, Brian, yeah. Ford came out with a new car that looked exactly like the new Chevy. What do you think Chevy would do? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of different sides to it, right? You know. Rick Hefner, we love Mark. Yeah, Mark's a good dude, man. Trogley has the best uh, explanation. Yeah, so there's these guys that are right into it. I mean, if you really want to, like, the factual, really what's happening, watch the bigger YouTube guys, the guys that are actually in the industry. They've got a much better insight. I I know, I know a, a couple of people that are like in that group. So those are the people that I've been talking to, and uh, they've been filling me in on a lot of that. Thank you. Coffee delivery. We can keep. We can continue now. Um. Yeah, who's playing their guitar while they're watching? I was playing mine at the beginning of the show, Jason. Use a pipe insulation. Okay, Bobby. Fred Fritch, welcome. Uh, Andrea wanted me to say, oh, say hi to Andrea. Yeah, Ben, say hi to Andrea. Yeah, it was nice meeting her. Okay. Uh, Hugh Caldwell, the Mab guitars are great. I've never heard of Mab. I've never heard of Mab, uh, Hugh. Okay, I'm sorry, folks. I'm catching up. Paul Lou, nice to see you. Uh, Brian Stewart, because you said cheap stand, have you considered the foam might not be nitro? For yeah. Yeah, I know, Brian. Yeah, I've been warned about that extensively. So I'm going to throw some rags over the post there. Or maybe replace the posts altogether. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, I'm catching up. Fred Fritch, welcome again. Okay, okay. Scott Connor, Charlie. Metalhead Hippie, welcome. 71 watching. Wow, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much for checking this show. You guys make my week every week, man. I come on here and it's like, I don't know what I'm going to do, whatever. And then. You guys pop in and like, holy shit, I'll, I'm almost an hour in. Like, you guys are amazing. Uh, Lando 27 Music, thank you for popping in. Appreciate it. Charles Green is here. Hey, man. Nice to see you. And it jumped on me again. Man, the chat is really jumping on me again. Okay, okay. I'm catching up, catching up. Uh, Brian Ladworth is playing as Gretsch. Yeah, Gretsches are nice, man. I really dig the Gretsches. Half Face, how are you? Half Face, I was playing some uh, Kiss earlier. BB made most stands these days don't use rubber. If it has any foam, sort of foam look to it, I wouldn't worry. Yeah, it's it's a foam. It's not rubber. Arvon Gaunt. Nice to see you. Welcome. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, I think I've caught up to everyone. Okay, cool. Um, so, folks, so uh, a couple things. I make this speech every show. So, folks, I got, I don't know, 60-some-odd people in here. Um, folks, you guys are a fantastic community. Uh, it blows me away every week. You guys tuning in to watch my mug and yak about guitars. Um, really appreciate it. Let's all support each other, folks. Let's keep this community growing. Let's keep it positive. Let's keep it, you know, 
a happy place. Want to thank you all so much for you know for supporting me, supporting the channel. Um, you know, if you're not sub to my channel, uh, please subscribe. Uh, please subscribe. If please like the video, you know, um, keep it. Uh, you know, help me get to a thousand subs. I'm trying to get to a thousand before Nam. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen. I got like two weeks left to do it, but anyways, that's okay. Um, yeah. And also, uh, I've got, uh, I've got merch. I got shirts. I got, um, mugs and all that kind of stuff. I still have these shirts. Um, I also have a couple of new designs. So if you're interested in some guitar hack merch to support the channel, check that out below. I also have a PayPal to help me out with Nam. That's also below um so folks you guys absolutely rock uh got a couple minutes left let me catch some last questions if there's any does guitar hack channels where the party happens <laughs> okay thanks man i appreciate that yes bb made yeah you hit it right on the head my favorite thing about your channel is positive you know i say this all the time man there's enough shit outside let's keep it out there let's not bring it in here this is all about learning from each other growing the community learning stuff about guitars talking music and and all that because that's that's the escape from the bs right uh, okay yeah thanks dale palmer thank you so much Hey, Brad Miller. <laughs> Sorry about that, man. Sorry about that. All right. Okay, Brad. So that's it. So I want to thank you all so much. You guys rock. Uh, I got two gigs coming up this weekend. I will try to stream again. If I can, I will. Uh, if not, uh, I'll probably be doing an after gig hangout on the weekend at some time. Uh, probably on the Sunday. Because I have two gigs, so I could do an after gig weekend twice, <laughs> but I'll only do one. So it'll probably be uh, on the Sunday, all right? So we'll catch you then. Have a great rest of the week. Have a fantastic uh, weekend, and uh, we'll see you soon. Cheers. <laughs>